Thank you so much. Wow. Hello, everyone. I'm Dalai. We're going to talk a little bit about development, but for non-developers. Try to make things interesting, spice up a little bit, some personal tales. I'm not Jama. Sorry about that. Love his work. I'm the first one that was looking forward to, look at, to, to, see, to see his work. But let's try to make something out of this. I've been using Blender since 2005. So an ArcVis here and there, so Python development, work in films, research presented at SIGGRAPH, drones flying, full domes projected to get particle, cosmic particles projected for people dancing, books, and among all of this is connected to Blender. I've been using Blender for so many times, it has been paying my bills for so long. And as a developer, it's been 11 years since my first patch landed into Master. And ah, so many things happened since then. At the time, I was doing Blender Game Engine, the little part of Blender which I liked. And from there, we kind of, I got myself involved in 2.80, Blender as a whole. So I would like to share a little bit about that. So <clears throat> Blender 2.80, it was just something that all the old users could just come in, get on board, and just do amazing work as they used to do before. But we also really welcome new users, people that has, have never, ever, ever used Blender before. And I say, oh my god, things are so fast, so, so easy to learn now. The UI, the UX, everything just clicks, everything just works. And we took Blender that could do already so many things. And out of a sudden, we can keep, keep doing more things. We can do more I.O., Alembics better supported, Grease Pencil, so many things. And the scope of what we accomplished with 2.80, what we all accomplished with 2.80, is really beyond the shyest vision I think that Tom had years ago. And we got there, we made it. When you do talk about 2.80, we are talking about workspaces. We all know about that. We are talking about collections how to organize your scene, we all know that. And we kind of know about Eevee a little bit, but what some people might not know is how, that, how did that start? Why to even bother with real-time rendering? And is that only for rendering? Stick here a little bit. Um, we start to bring in technology which uh, were in video games, which were used by the industry as a whole, to modernize how artists use their tools within Blender which means, of course, real-time rendering, but also means much, much more. Jeez, Grease Pencil. We didn't even see that coming. There's those, those artists working in Spain, really trying to get storyboarding, you know, storyboard, storyboarding agenda moved forward. Jeez, animation, so many things, so many things. I don't need to, to, to preach what Blender is about. We all know about it. But if you look at back at it, it's like, oh, wow. It's actually like this way. Oh, wow. <laughs> so many has passed. We actually got so many things scrambled inside this little piece of software, which is still under 200 megabytes. I mentioned briefly that, OK, we had real-time rendering techniques used for video games. That's all, not only for Eevee. What does that mean? That means you can have non-photorealistic rendering, helping someone to visualize the whole scene, helping to have an overview of some basic shadows that's not realistic shadowing, but gives um, a good read of the scene when you work on it. You all remember the old way to display normals in Blender, but you know, if you have a whole modern pipeline for rendering, why not just simply have one single path that shows what's wrong with the model? Well, here, whoever did grooming in the past must be really praised, and. I'm surprised they don't give up. They haven't give, given up on Blender at the time. Because now we can do grooming in real time. We have seen the Daniel talk uh, yesterday. And to have this level of quality, not only for rendering, but for work. The idea was also always to bring this kind of technology to facilitate what you're doing every single day. Play Blast can be fancy. Grooming can be fancy. One central piece of 2.80 was Eevee was something that got us a lot of traction. A lot of people jumped on board. Right from the beginning, we get artists such as Daniel volunteering to send us files. He, bring, he, he jokes that in the, when he started using 2.80, there were no mood fires. Everything had to be baked and applied. And when the moment we had 
armature mode fires in. He said, okay, I have something I want to play with. And then he gave us the tree creature. And it's a file that anyone can download. But we also collected, right in the first year, 2017, two years before the official release, we are going to SIGGRAPH and say, you know, people are already playing with this. Why don't you guys can maybe share a few files? And people just, okay. Probably all of them have to be applied because there's no modifier, but people were already using it. If you look at the presentations, if you go back to YouTube and watch every single presentation here, there's probably, I haven't seen a single 2.7 screen in the main stage. Everyone's using 2.80. Now, think about that. 2.80 was officially re released in August. The calls for people to send their presentation was also August. What happened? How can everyone be using 2.80 before it's out? Because that's the community. People, are, we're building Blender together, and we built, we got that far together. This is one of my favorite pieces. This was the Blender 2.8 splash screen for two years. Two years. Before the release, we just had this as a main screen. This is my work desk. Any similarity with the Eevee name and the Pokemon is pure coincidence. <laughs> one thing interesting about Eevee, actually, let me bring it back here. At first, the main goal was to replace the Blender internal. We wanted to open Cintel files with 2.80, and it would be just wow, automatic. Everyone would be like so excited, and oh my god. And I said, during those two years, people were just taking it and saying, I don't care about the Blender internal. I don't want to use cycles anymore. They were replacing cycles with the EV. Say, wow, OK, let's embrace that. We still don't support the Blender internal versioning. We just remove it. Blender don't remove it, but like, ah, very controversial. Not really. <laughs> and I still know people that are using 2.7, but something changed and has been changed for two years. The process has been very, well, quite a ride for everyone. Now, to talk about a bit, a bit of development of Blender, something that's very fuzzy throughout the years, it changed a lot. But I want to talk about the 2.8 specific. Before the so-called code quest, we actually had a whole year living in Amsterdam. Clement, is Clement here? I haven't seen here for... No, he didn't make it. Clement's a great developer, he got on board, he got Mike Irving, and we have a core team already working in the, depth, in the dependency graph in, in library overrides. So for a whole year, we tried to settle the foundation for the, what would be, was going to be the 2.80. And then, you know what? Why don't you bring everyone on board? Why don't you bring every single of those external contributors to Blender or higher developers that are Australia, United States, in the same place? And that's how we tried to do for the, the Blender code quest. So this was for the first year. It was so exciting, the viewport. But the code quest was going to be so much bigger. So we came from, like, I say, like five-ish developers, six developers, to a team of 10. It was 10 to 12 developers at a single time. And at that time, I was then in charge to help facilitate the development. I'm no manager. I'm an architect. So but if I can help people to talk to each other, the designer, with the engineer, with the client, that gives me joy. And I think we put quite a team together here. One thing interesting that at first we were expecting the industry to really come on board and give us like a lot of money. We understand that 2.8 is going to be fantastic. We did have support from the early days. AMD was sponsoring us. They sponsored the Blender conference for a few years. Tangent Animation, they're, they actually were one of the main sponsors of the new viewport of EV. My own salary. Thank you, Tangent. And but the response to the kick to the crowdfunding for the Code Quest was a bit underwhelming when it came to the, the industry. But the, all the users that we we knew that we had then, we are always shy to the Blender as a foundation. We're always shy to actually ask for money. You know, Tom is this guy, I don't care about money. But then people were just, okay, I, want, I want to give you the money. I want to see it happening. I can see the point of getting everyone together in the same place. And I want the nice little rocket. So cute. <laughs> and it was a huge, huge, huge success. Until then, Oh, well, we still have it in a way. The Blender development, since it started, since it went out of a company and become open source, was really move tailored. So we had a project at the Blender Institute, and with this project, we had a very clear use case and guidelines to where we want the Blender to be. There was a game on that. This is a very uh, a project. Care. It's the first project I got the credits in the poster. 
because I got to select the whole process, just helping a little bit of TD, not a lot. And we still use those projects to further Blender, but the industry took Blender over. They came, us, they came over to us and said, well, I'm also using Blender. We all know Tangent Animation. We all know what they did with Text 10. So they also have a vision that we can share and work together. And their moves you know, was seen by millions of people in their couch. And it's incredible. That's a new, that's a new TV. That's a new cinema. How many people go to the cinema nowadays? So Blender is really walking hands in hands with those partners, with how we're making art nowadays. Next then was not the first feature film we had in Blender. That credit goes to Plumiferous Production Argentina. Aussie was the first one from Tangent, made in Blender. It's a simple project, smallest, a very small budget, but they had this amazing distribution. If you went to Paris during the uh, month where when Aussie was released, you could get a McDonald's in Paris. The main cover was a Blender character for a Blender movie. We're not, ki we're not kids anymore. Maybe we're not the... I don't think I watched the whole thing, but we were getting there was making waves. And I, I was bringing the agent also, because that's... We have this back... Don has this back burn dream that at some point we might going to make our own feature films inside the Blender headquarters, which it doesn't fit a film production here. This is the place where development was happening for Blender, well, beside the internet, of course, where the animation movies were made for the Blender Animation Studio, where the foundation as part of the chairman was there. And it was a beautiful place. We could do so many things there. But as you can see, this was a podcast we recorded. We had a mattress on the back. <laughs> we had a bike that was probably trying to get fixed. And we could do everything as a meeting, as a whiteboard. This is to, to, <clears throat> this is to uh, 27, 2016. We had a usability workshop as part of the kickoff. As part of the kickoff for the for, the, for what then be the 2.80. And we're just we didn't have space. You can see we're using every single surface we had to write things. You see here's layer. This is when we're trying to replace layer with what then became the collection system. So I'm trying to get artists and uh, it was so hard. It's fighting the fight. But <laughs> but it's also a very beautiful location. And if you're whoever is staying here a bit longer, if you go to the Interpodoc, it's near the zoo. It's a beautiful place. You can wake up with the monkeys talking. <laughs> it's beautiful throughout the whole year, but it was small, and it had to move, it had to grow. We went to the north. Um, this is in the... Every, I think everyone knows that tomorrow the studio is open for visitors starting noon, the year of the daylight saving time change. But we had to move, and then we, we moved to this amazing space with the most incredible cleaning staff. <laughs> everyone had to help. People had to paint the walls if they, need, they wanted the standing desks. People that had time would just help, because we all believed in that. And we all see that we wanted to grow together with Blender, so the core development team. And we could have so many meetings. We have uh, Campbell, Brecht, Francisco here. We could receive visitors without disturbing the production. Those are my parents. <laughs> you could watch TV in the lobby, cheering for the World Cup. So it could fit a lot of things and some serious things such as training courses. It's always, we could have, finally have a solid training facility that can receive professionals from the industry. How, used, how was the Blender development team in a way? For years we had this very scattered team throughout the world. Oof, people from Europe, America, people working as, con as a contractor for the Blender Foundation or institute from home or from the institute or here working from Google, coming consulting every now and then. We had Andrea contributing, patches though, people that have a day job, then they work on the side. Students, companies trying to get crowdfund, like the composter work, Munich and, and Irun. They had their own crowdfunding happening on the side, and then Irun now is on board with us. So have all this decentralized structure. But because of the code quest, I believe we tried to, you know, with not only centralize, but to make sure that everyone, doesn't matter where they are, doesn't matter if it's a user or as a developer, can follow the whole process together and can work together as a team. We put a lot of effort in communication. That goes for the blog we have, the code.blender.org. 
Jesus Christ. <laughs> and we really had this idea that it doesn't matter if a developer is here, if a developer is at home, doesn't matter if it's a user, a power user, a technical user, we all should share the main mental models, the main core design. We call this design, it's not a UI design, maybe it's a product, project design, but we're really putting effort. Since the community really took over the project on their own hands to make it work, we wanted to give it back in a way that, you know, just making sure people could follow closely what we're doing. Pablo started such an amazing work with the videos, we had live streams, we had daily, almost daily uh, updates on what was happening with Blender. This is one of the final live streams we had. And we now have the Blender today. Oh, it's fantastic, it's amazing. Millions, uh, thousands, of, thousands of views every single day, every single Monday. But I think the seed that, you know, that was uh, planted back then was like, okay, people are craving communication. They're craving this feeling of being part of the community. And we're trying our best. This is also called the jail. Because it's this very cubicle, kind of industrial <laughs> office. We have a few of them, you can visit them tomorrow. How do we go about planning? How do we get 10 people together in the same room and make sure we're all working together? Honestly, we just used Inkscape. <laughs> we had a whiteboard with every single task we had to perform. What you see here in red are things that we cannot do without, more the fantasy graph uh, infrastructure. I can barely read. Oh, you guys can read. It's beautiful. So many different tasks. But we had a few of the blue ones, which are the ones that, well, we need them. However, if you have to move them forward, it's not a problem. Because we knew that people would be using since the beginning. We knew that we need to be flexible in allocating our developers. And one thing very interesting, you see here this huge black bar. So this is the cold quest planning overall, three months planning. In the middle of it, we have this black bar. What is that? What is that? That's spring. That's when the spring team had to switch to Blender 2.80. And we blocked the entire week to make sure we could provide whatever support they needed. Because then it's once again the Blender Foundation, the Blender Development uh, Coordination, trying to take, use movies as real use cases and try to use this to base the direction we go. This is Andy Godashi. Great talking this morning. And I would, <laughs> I would just go, I, I love art. We are in the digital art world. I'll just go there and just stalk him. And I said, Andy, just get used to it, because I'm going to be doing this every single day. It's like a camera. At some point, you get used to it. And I just start working regularly. And he got used to it, and I love it. And that also, this was also a way to, to see how people are using Blender. Every time you'd get one of those sample files I mentioned, I would go over the collections. Mm, they're not using collections yet. Oh, they're actually using collections in a nested way. And it's, it helps to just be with the artists. This is one of the, also the core principles of Blender and the Blender development, how tied we are with the, the art community, with uh, the users we have. It was also summer, which is ah, kind of can get on the way. It's so beautiful. <laughs> can go picnicking, eating, eating outside. But honestly, we still were crumbled together, trying to squeeze the most we could out of the days we had. It felt way too short. Three months felt way too short. It does help to have summer on the background. You get to see some nice things. And again, it's the new studio, the new institute, the new headquarters. There was room for everything, but it's still, you'd still find new corners to try to have meetings. So this is, was the old kitchen, now became one of the offices we have. But whenever we had more than two, three people together, there was something we could just discuss. In person, it's so much, oh, so much productive to do this way. As I said, three months is short in a way, because we just got ambitious. We're awful in project management, we're gonna get better. But to say, since we have more people, let's make more <laughs> stuffs. Let's make more things in Blender. So we, this is a compiled list by July 2017 of we could not finish. We cannot get ready in time. This navigation manipulator, annotation system, and we try to figure out how long any, any of those things would take. <sighs> I'll be honest here. Starting in July, so the code quest started in April, right? We had 10 developers. We had money. Everything was so excited. But starting in July, we'd be a team of four to five people only. 
coordination. There's no more money for that. There's no more funding. There's no more everything. So really, okay, we got a taste of what it would be to work together in a structured environment with a lot of the people collaborating. But the, the true reality is this was still a bit far from what we could have, what we wanted to have. It did help, though, to have be three months together for everyone. You build this kind of camaraderie. We know whenever you have a meeting with someone online, over Skype, or over chat, you remember this person, remember when you're just chilling in the couch. It helps to build consensus later on. But we still had this, we had this crave, we wanted more, we wanted more. I'm so glad that then the Blender Foundation, I think Tom, we had Francisco, the whole team, like, embraced, I think Pablo was always, always pushing for this as well, embraced this idea that people are willing to contribute to Blender, and they saw that they get features back, that they, get, they can see the process, we're still transparent, they trust our judgment in a lot of ways. So the dev fund was put together. This was, I took this picture in the past. It doesn't even fit in the slide anymore. <laughs> Just keep getting bigger. This was my, <laughs> we had not only overwhelming support from the community, but then at some point, bah, we got epic mega grant. Oh my God. And bah, we have AMD, we have NVIDIA. Bah, who else is going to be on board? <laughs> who else is going to be on board? It's missing. <laughs> but that means, we can go back, I think we can revisit what was that experience, and maybe we can make it a more continuous, uh, continuous part of the flow of development of Blender. We now have a more structured administration uh, department, or team at least. Don is really continuous thinking the big picture to guide the direction of Blender, but it's also the only person that can be talking to the big guys to get us money, to get us fund, to bring Ubisoft on board, to bring Tangent on board. So it's nice that we're also trying to structure and grow as a more, it's not a vertical structure, but a more professionalized structure. We can have people that can be trained each other, we can make sure onboarding is done properly so new contributors can um, feel part of this and really be empowered to contribute to Blender to give it back to the community. Still a challenge, we're still not there yet. We still, we, we, grew, we grew too fast. And yet, we still have those developers scattered around the, the globe. Half of the team is in Europe. This is a little bit the SEST, Central European Summertime, work hours for all the developers for last month. Green means they're definitely online. Yellow, they might not. They might slip in or not. So like the first, the basics, we didn't even know, like, when do everyone work? When can I try to get a meeting with someone? Because it's, again, so big. And we are trying bi weeklies nowadays, so every 15 days we go in one to two. So I'm always trying to host and have two developers, different de developers every time, have all the 18 of them, like going over the week, always have a topic, what I would like to hear from them, just to guide their direction. Like 10 minutes, 10 minutes, and then 10 minutes buffer just to chat a little bit. And this was one of the previous bi weeklies. I always wake up at 7 o'clock in the morning to attend it. The way how I'm, so it's noon at Europe, so I get some quick breakfast. And we are trying to get it uh, to work. For us, the growing and, the, and open source development drives a lot of us to, to keep improving, to keep working in Blender, to keep growing professionally. But for us, it's still a lot of unknown. But I believe with what we learned with the code quest and how well received it was our efforts and the result we got, I do think we have a bright future ahead. Thank you very much. <laughs>